Okay, everyone, what we're going to look at today is we're going to look at a Bezier curve, um, which is this little thing up here. If you go into add curve and Bezier, um, you'll get this sort of hairline thing. It, it doesn't look very impressive. In fact, it looks pretty pointless when you just look at it like that. But I'm going to show you a really cool trick with this thing now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this thing force another object to bend around it. So if I just pop into edit mode, I'll show you how you actually manipulate these things. So you see how there's lots of handles on it. So this handle up here, if I click on it in general, so using the middle one, I can move this around. I can move it through the X, Y, Z axes. Uh, it's, you can also get the ends of the handles. Um, again, if I press J and I can move it around all of the axes at once, or if I just wanted to say move it along the Z, uh, the X axis, GX and I can move that one see and it kind of changes the depth of the curve and same with this one uh, say I went G and Y so it went off in that way and you can see I can kind of start getting a very um, it, it's great for actually making tight curves and so on and so forth particularly if you have something like a, a curved building edge and you want to really create a lovely architecture to it okay uh, you can also extrude them so if I were to click on this one here press A and then I'm going to extrude it along the X first then I'm going to see we've created a new one here then I'm going to GY it just to extrude it along the Y to pull them apart and there we go, we've actually got three points now that we can manipulate on this now I want to actually feed a, a cylinder over this, I actually want to wrap a cylinder around it and the way we do that, first of all we need to actually select to start the curve at one of these points, so either this one or this one, one of the end points. I'm going to pick this one where the actual, the kind of centipede legs are pointing backwards. And I'm going to click on this actual handle here, so I collect the whole thing. I'm going to go into curve and then I'm going to snap the cursor to what I've selected. And then I'm going to go back into edit mode. And on the object, I'm going to set the origin point. At the cursor so this means that this actual object I don't think that word then hang on I'll just double check that set origin through the cursor. there we go it's moved to the so now the origin of this curve is right here okay, now that we've got that I'm just gonna alt and G to make it the very center okay here's my next thing that I'm adding I'm gonna add now my actual cylinder so there's my big cylinder I'm gonna shorten that down because it's far too big so I'll press N to get this up uh, I'm going to still make it two meters tall, but I want this just to be a lot thinner. Okay, and there we have this. Now, what we need to do with this is we need to go into edit mode as well, and we just need to select this edge or any any of the major edges would do. But I'm going for the bottom one, and again, I'm going to get into the mesh. I'm going to snap the cursor to selected so that it's here. Back into edit mode and then object set origin to 3d cursor and again I'm just going to get this thing in the middle so now these actually have their origin points exactly in the same place what do I need to do next well I need to subdivide this a bit because it's too solid at the moment so I'm just going to subdivide it by going into edit mode selecting all and subdivide it a bit more um, and then we get just some, the more of these we get, the more sort of little subdivisions, the more flexibility our part's going to have. I'm also going to add a few more and right the way along the lines. There we go. So just created a few more little points on it. Okay. Back into object mode. Okay. Here's the cool little bit. This is how we actually make it fold along here. We go into our little properties we add a modifier and we're going to add a curve modifier and we can actually select the curve that we want it to be modified to then we've just got to put it along the correct axis and there we go so as you can see it's gone onto the Z now and watch this as we move this curve that I'll actually move along with it we don't quite want it to do that by the way but it's just an example we'll find that one of these handles actually moves that curve as you can see along you can see it, it kind of following it now like a, a train or a snake along a path it's actually really really awesome i love these things um i should also i think be able to 
expand the size of this, but I've got to get, there we go. So obviously whatever axis deformation you've used, that'll actually dictate its length. And look at it, it's actually carried itself along the, the length. I can keep expanding it, but what you've got to see is once it goes past the actual length of the curve, it becomes very straight then and solid. I'm just going to pull it back a bit. And as I said, because the actual deformation is on the Z, as I manipulate the Z axis, um, which again can be a, a bit confusing for you because you'll be like, well, hang on a second, that's not moving downwards, is it? That's moving along. But what you've got to remember is it's been deformed on the Z axis. So it does actually kind of cause that oddity as it were. Well, you've got to remember as well that if I just head back into edit mode, uh, you'll see that when the actual pipe is, well, the cylinder is upright, it's there. So when I go back into tab, the actual curve forces it to lay on its side. So technically, this is still right, it's still technically on its Z axis that it's moving, because these are still technically its Z axis. So sometimes we can get a bit of weirdness going on with these. Uh, I'll just try a little trick, actually. I'm wondering if this works. If I were to go back into object mode, get hold of this i'm curious if i were to actually rotate it on the y by 90 degrees you'll see uh, it actually becomes x now is the the actual axis that you need to play around on uh, let me have a look you see and now the, it's the x axis that will actually follow it uh, even if i move this down here you see it'll still follow the curve even if it's not actually fully attached to it if i you can see with that Y there, it kind of really messes it up. Um, as you can see, it's kind of following it, and you've just got to be careful about how you play around with it. But that is basically how you use these curves to bend an object. And it doesn't just work for these either. It doesn't just work for cylinders. It works for any kind of cube. So if you really wanted to create a curve in a building using a cube, it's fully possible to do it. Um, just go to undo everything that I've done now because you can see it's kind of completely off all over the place. It's not where I want it to be. There we go. I've returned it to the Z. And that's it really. It's a really, really cool thing to do. You can also imagine that if you could hide this, if you were doing animations, you could you could basically give the weirdest impression of a nice little animation. You can make this look like a snake or something moving through the grass. And give it a path to follow or if you were making a train you can even make it a train and give the illusion that it's following the track uh they're really really cool i hope you like that anyway i hope you like and subscribe and leave any comments on i'm actually going to go away now because i want to see if i'm actually capable of making a bamboo a shoot of bamboo out of this and i'm really interested to see if that will work so don't forget to really 